every single Thursday morning. What we're going to be doing in the Agent From Within group is going to be just delivering real help, real value when it comes to real estate agents. And here's the thing. With Google, we don't really need any more training. This is what blows my freaking mind. It's like, hey, let's talk about hiring an assistant, how to write an ad, how to do buyer mail outs, how to set up your whiteboard. Like at the end of the day, it's not about, it's not about the how anymore. It's you have Google. The question I have, and this is the from within part, is how can I help you actually execute on what you want? How do I help you get what you want? And maybe, maybe it's a mindset thing. Maybe it's something else. Sure, I can give you a lot of house. I train constantly in the house and I train, I've got full how to advertise. I've got full systems. I've got full training, all this stuff. But at the end of the day, the real change happens within you. And so we're going to go through this today. I see we've got a bunch of viewers already, so that's great. We're streaming live right now on Facebook and on YouTube. Now, here's the thing. It's not going to be replayed. We're going to be deleting it after, and then we're going to be reposting it, packaging it in a month on our platforms. Because what we want to do is every Thursday, if you want the real deal, you want to talk to me, you can put out questions. I am literally will coach you right now. If you have something specific, I'd love to be able to help you, challenge you, put a microscope on your business and on your life. I want to play the game like that. I want to do every Thursday to give our tribe time. I have a lot of great high paying clients. They get a heck of a lot more than what you're going to get. But I know there's a huge amount of past tribe members. There's a huge amount of people that are like, Ben, can you help me? And I just don't have the capacity because I really focus on the few things that I do because I'm building a life I love. I'm sitting here in the West Coast of Vancouver. I've run business. I've got a real estate team in Edmonton. I've got a, I've got a national coaching business, do public speaking and do all kinds of stuff. At the end of the day, though, I just want to build a life that I love. And this is what's focused in real estate. The industry is teaching you how to chase gross revenue numbers. And that's an issue for me because if you go into the, go into the shark's tank, like you go to the, you go to the shark tank on the TV show and you walk in there and you say, Hey, I'm a real estate agent. And I'm, I, I just want to tell you, uh, uh, I've made a million dollars this year. The first thing, the four, you know, uh, like tight Titans of business are going to ask you is, what did you actually make? No, no, I made a million dollars. I was on stage at the conference in Vegas and they gave me this amazing award because I made a million dollars this year. No, 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 Mr. Real Estate Agent. You're, you didn't make a million. What did you make? Oh, how much did you spend to make the million? And this is the where the industry maybe drops the ball because if that person says, I spent $950,000, on marketing and advertising, and I made a million dollars, the industry puts you as a god. Anyone in real business calls you a fool. We have a massive disconnect about building businesses versus giving fake awards to agents so they keep on grinding. And it's an old school sales tactic. It's just, this is what you do. I'm not against awards. I love winning awards, but we just have to know exactly what those mean. Yes, they can be motivating. I'm a big fan. I, man, I'm rookie of the year, top team in all of Canada. I've won so many different awards that are pretty prestigious. And every time it's freaking cool. But I remember that's not net profit. That's not business. They're not celebrating customer service. They're not celebrating anything. So I have a really deep mission into family. How do we keep a family together? How do we grow connection with ourselves? And the thing is, we need a business. We need systems. We need help. If you think you can do it all yourself, you are mind blown. There's something wrong. And I, hopefully today we can see this. If you're on the call today, you know for sure you might need an assistant or you just like me and you like looking at me, good looking dude like me. You know, you might just want to sit there and hang out with me. But here's the thing, though. It's all about net. Gary McGowan, welcome to the show. I got to say, one of my favorite brokers that I know personally uh, with Keller Williams, he's in Ontario. If you're interested, he's a great guy. Uh, when it comes to me, I am not biased on any brokerage. I am biased on the human being 
the family values, building a life you love. And now we have to turn into business people. We can't just hustle our way to the top. That will burn you out. You will go home. You'll never shut your phone off when you're picking your kids up for school. And you're like, I'm not going to answer my phone when I'm picking my kids up for school. And you set the phone down and the stress begins because you know if that phone rings, you ignore it. You know there's a client that wants you. Now you have a divide between pulling you from your family, pulling you from business. What do we do? Well, you need to forward your phone to your assistant while you're picking up your kids. Boom. How much is that going to cost you? What, 10 bucks? I'm going to show you some things today that can actually change your game, get you reconnected with your family, make way more money, like ridiculous amounts of money if you actually have the right systems and, and actually the team. You can do things way more. It's just not taught. So we're going to go for it right now. So guys, let's get going. We've got about uh, 17 viewers. Only one like. Okay, guys, hit the like button right now. Let's get some likes going. Let's get some shares going. Throw the comments on there. I don't even mind a good old smart ass remark that gets me fired up. So if you like what I'm saying, please just throw it in the comments and uh, say something uh, funny, smart ass, or truly just ask a question. We are going to have some Q&A at the end. So let's get going right now. Let's start with this, guys. Check this out. First of all, how do you hire an assistant? <clears throat> if you're sitting there right now, hey, Facebook user, go click the StreamYard link and then I can see who you are. Just FYI. So guys, whoever's watching right now, open up your phone right now. Open up your phone and type in how to hire an assistant. If you're on a laptop or whatever, it might actually show a little bit better because the results are going to show you millions of pages of how to hire an assistant. Millions. There is more mother effing data and knowledge on how to hire an assistant. So why the frick are you on this call wasting your day listening to a bald dude in a nice jacket? Why? Because why are we looking at I need to figure out how that's the wrong question? Because Google has proven to me that we don't need to teach agents anymore. They have the most endless knowledge. There is no more knowledge. It's the world's knowledge on Google. Why are they not executing is my obsession. How do we get people to move forward? My obsession is human behavior because guess what? Learning more knowledge has not helped people. Action helps people. But why are you not taking action? That is where the from within, that's why 90% of what I do is psychology, mindset, understanding that you have these rules in your life you need to break. You have an internal game that's been programmed for the last 50 years. This is really important that we have to talk about moving forward is more of a better conversation than how to hire an assistant. At the end of this little talk I'm giving, I'm going to go through some, I'm going to rapid fire the house because it's not important. It's not important. Facebook user, because I'm about to hire again. Boom. I don't know who you are. Click the, click the, 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 the link. I think I have no clue. Honestly, I've got a team running this. So maybe there's a link that you can click register yourself with StreamYard or whatever it is. Then I can see who it is or else me and Gary are just going to hang out here. I got Gary. Okay. Let's move forward. We need to establish this. Why? is a better question than how. Corey, love you, brother. Love you, man. I might even use one of your stories. So here's the thing. Why is better than how? Think about this. Why do you need an assistant? You have to understand that we need to really check in on the motivation, not the how. Here's what I'm trying to say. How many people on the call here need to lose 10 pounds? Someone just said more like 20 or 30, but 10 pounds. Someone tell me right now in the comments, how do you lose 10 pounds? How do you lose 10 pounds? Exercise more, eat less sugar, exercise more, eat less sugar, eat less food, lower your calories. We know exactly how to lose 10 pounds, but guess what? We Google it. How do we lose 10 pounds? How do we do all these things? Go to the gym and start eating better. You got her, Allie. You got her. Make a decision to do it. What 
is holding us back. We know exactly what we need to do in our businesses so much. Thank you. Eat well and exercise. Everybody knows it here. But if, if we don't lose weight, why? Guess what? Let's imagine you get a phone call from your doctor and your doctor says, hey, guess what? You got, you're, you're on the verge of getting serious diabetes. But here's the thing. If you lose 10 pounds in 20 days, you probably can put off the diabetic life that you're about to have. Could you lose 10 pounds? The motivation is the problem. The motivation goes, it's every single person on this call, every, millions of people who will end up seeing it. Here's the thing. You can lose 10 pounds in 20 days. You don't need a fucking book. You don't need a Google search. This is what I need to tell you. Why do you need an assistant? You got to understand this. I had a mentor with Philip McKernan for years, and he has an amazing line, and it says, when the pain is enough, we change. So here's the thing. When I coach people, I challenge the shit out of them because it's mostly excuses. It's mostly things that are getting us stuck. Doing the deep dive on the inner work is, is, the, is, there, there, is no alt, there is no other hack to moving your business forward than the inner work. I'll go off track for a second. Just imagine you're going to a listing presentation and you're a perfectionist. How is that going to affect you? It's going to create anxiety because you can't be perfect in a listing presentation. How about you have fear of conflict? What if the person goes, so I don't like your price. You're screwed because the guy that knows how to handle conflict wins. You can learn everything you possibly can, but you won't get results. I coach, I've been coaching for years and I'm getting results. The reason why, because I don't waste time teaching how I give you the answer. If you don't do it, we got to figure out why. So let's go through this. Why is motivating? How keeps you stuck? That should be, that should be in the offices of brokerages. How keeps you stuck? Why keeps you motivated? So let's go. How let's go. How guys look at this. How do I advertise? Where do I advertise? How do I pay her or him? How do I show her what to do? How do I, how do I do a job description? What hours should they work? Licensed or unlicensed, part-time, full-time, salary, by the hour. How, how do I train them? Should I hire family? Should I share with another agent? How can I afford it? What would I give her to do or give he? Look at that. Awesome. Hey, I'm not worried about perfectionism. I could care fucking less. It has a spelling error. Bring it on. How do I know when the right time to hire? How do I fire them? How, how, how? We could literally start repeating what Google has. How, how, how? I can't, this is stuck. I hope you're understanding. This is how you stay stuck. Why? I don't want to lose connection with my wife, my spouse my family, my friends. I'm so tired of paperwork. I want to grow a team. I want to hit a new financial level. I want to add more value to my clients. I need to invest in keeping my clients for 20 years. I'm tired of prospecting. I want to be able to take time off without stressing on the beach, stressing on date night. You're at a kid's thing. You're on the side of the field watching soccer. And the damn phone rings because it's a great deal and you got to take it. If I don't answer that phone, if I don't chase that lead, if my client's going to be happy, I'm going to lose the deal. Holy shit. I forgot to do that. I forgot to do that. The pressure is so high, guys. I want to be the best version of myself. I want, I'm tired of being tired. I want to be present at home without thinking of the work that's sitting there for me to do. I want to get rid of the energy sucking tasks out of my life. I want to lower the pressure in my head. I'm tired of evenings and weekends being sacrificed to work. You don't need to know how. You need to really understand why. When I started in real estate, I had no business. I was a business coach. I grow business. So I took a different approach. I literally didn't listen to anybody. I just did my thing. What I did was I, I, I ended up hiring an assistant probably the first month. I, in my first year, my first 12 months, I had a $96,000 paid out commission month. 
So I have a program called that we're beta testing right now. It's called the real estate rocket fuel. It's going to be brutally hard, but it's going to be wild results. That's a brand new agents. And it's going to cost because people don't actually get results without making a real investment. And that's the stuff I'm talking about. I did to get there. I'm not going to get into that today. That was ADD. But here's the thing. I hired an assistant right away and at credit capacity. Now, here's the thing. I wasn't fully tied to what I wanted in my life. I was disconnected from my wanted. So there's a warning here, guys. If you hire an assistant and you pull it off and you scale your business, which is freaking awesome. If you're not tied to what you want in life, clear on what you want, you will just grow more capacity for sales. And if you're not clear, you'll get busier and busier. I know men and that are, I, I'm coaching a guy right now. He's one of the top agents in Canada. He has, I think he has four or five team members. And every time he adds a new team member, he has the ability to get more business. But he hasn't hired me for more business. He's hired me to figure out how to have a business serve his life. And I want to warn everyone that hiring an assistant will create more financial gain, but it can also be a trap. So you got to connect to why I want to grow. Why do I need this much money? A million dollar agent is mostly not happy, but a three to $500,000 agent with a couple team, with a team member and an assistant, is building amazing lives. I, I'm not seeing a million dollar agent strong. I, I, I've been there many times. But the thing is, if we don't tie to what we want, then what we're going to do is just be obsessed with growth. This is why we need to bring this up right now. I'm getting anxiety, Ali. Love this guy. Best voice in the frick, wicked voice. I wish I could bring you on and be like, just talk. I just want to listen to you talk, Ali. I'm getting anxious, LOL. As I went through all these questions, Ali, put your, put your Instagram or, or Facebook, tag it in there, man. People got to meet you. You got a wicked voice and you're a good human being. I'll never forget you from the event there in Toronto. But the anxiety is exactly right, Ali. I'm getting anxiety looking at all this, all these questions. That's what I'm trying to say. So let's keep moving here, guys. Let's do a test. Let's do a test right now. Really ugly test. Put a gun to your head, but like, no, 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 gun to the head test. It's not a gun to your own head. It's a gun to your family's head. I am obsessed with growing a business that gives me the ability to connect with my family, building a fucking adventurous life fulfilled where we have great love, great sex, great time together. I want to have an amazing home life, but I also make a ton of money and that calls building a business. And so my obsession is this. Family is important to me, so let's put a gun to the family's head. You're sitting here. You're having a meeting with me going, Ben, I'm having a hard time. I, I just don't know what to do. I can't hire an assistant. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Uh, and I'm looking at you and say, okay, let's solve this right now. I don't need to waste my time talking to you, and you're not going to do anything with this. I literally do not need to tell you anything. I have enough self-confidence. I don't need you to say, oh, I, I feel great because I give you advice. I don't give a shit. I want to see results. I want to make impact. So put a gun to your family's head. And, they, and, and this horrible human being says, if you don't hire an assistant in the next 24 hours, your family's dead. 100% of the people that need an assistant would hire an assistant in 24 hours. I have, a, I have a program. It's my flagship program called the Real Estate Reboot. It's 12 weeks. It goes through. It helps you get you out of your way and put in all your systems you need to literally build a life that you love, making a lot of money with way less time. And, and it's funny because I'm, I'm on week three with one group. And, and what's interesting is I had homework and, and we went through some, some, some prep work. And they say, and I said, what did you do to move your business forward? And one person says, you know what? I hired an assistant putting in the birthday system. We're, we're getting my CRM all together. She's doing it all for me. And it was literally within a few days she had executed that. Another guy in the same group who's been in real estate for a long time too says, I'm still considering and mulling over the assistant thing. See, my perspective is different than most people's because I'm working with agents constantly and I'm watching the people that execute win and the people that don't execute they're stuck. And that's what I'm trying to say. We need to unstuck you. That's the hack. That's the hack. So I just want to tell you, you guys all know how to do it. You guys all know how to do it. I want you guys to remember, 
I need an assistant just for my serum. Boom. Facebook user. Who is that again? Is that, is that Michelle or Corey? So here's the thing. An assistant runs your systems, not your business. Lesson one, lesson one. Think about this. Here's why a lot of people don't get their own assistant. Let's get into this guys, because you don't have systems. See, when you hire an assistant, you're, 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 you're a one man show and you're sitting there and you're like, oh, what do I get her to do? Oh my goodness. Well, you haven't put any time into building an actual business. So why would she, she's going to come work with you. And then what your chaos, you just put it all on your shoulders and run around and you, you do it all. And, and, and even if you had someone to help, you probably don't have the, the, the leadership ability to let someone do a bad, a job that's 90% as good as you or 80% as good as you. So you can scale. When someone says, I need an assistant, I'm like, yeah, join my reboot so we can get your systems in first. Do you celebrate? Like, if you think about all the ideas you have, man, I wish I could have a, a drip campaign that gives high value to my past clients. I wish I could put a birthday system in and deliver that. And all, I, I, I wish I had my paperwork all put together. Hey, Paige, cool. And so, so here's the thing. I, I wish I could, I wish I had a system in place that I have deal flow emails where it's like, now that you're pending, now that you're an escrow, now that you key release, here's what happens. All of those phone calls that are you're getting on a daily basis. Hey, uh, what happens now? When does the inspection happen? What's the lawyer do? We have pre-written deal flow emails. So now I just need someone to send them. See, instead of saying, Hey, I need an assistant. How about put in your deal flow emails? And then when you hire someone, you say, I need you to, as soon as the deal goes pending, as soon as it's under contract or an escrow for Americans, I need you to send this email that has five or six or seven different Q and A's that it's saying, Hey, look, this is what happens. This is what the inspection, some things to happen during the inspection. This is what's going on at the lawyer's. And then once you're like, oh, you've just waived all your conditions, we're now completely locked in. This is what happens next. And then what happens after that is that three days from key release on key release, here's what happens. And what about, so those are about 30 phone calls a month. If you're rocking, maybe it's three phone calls, but it's phone calls you do not have to have. This is going to lighten the load. This is called scale. It's called, you can't hire someone to build that. That's your job. So I've built all of these things. That's why I have courses. That's why I have the real estate reboot. I guess this would be a good time, Jordan, to throw a real estate reboot. If you want to book a call with me and you actually want to get your systems together and get an actual business to going, book a call with me. We're starting in June. I only work with seven to 10 people in a group and we absolutely destroy it. We get results, but mostly we get you out of your own way. So here's the thing. The assistant runs the systems, not your business. Ali, damn, so true. Delegating, baby. That's right. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you can't, what are you going to delegate if you don't have a system? Like, hey, can you, uh, can you just get my list together? Well, no wonder you're not going to be a good leader. You think you're ever going to have a team? If you want a team, you have to have systems. If you want systems, you need someone to run the systems. If you think you can do it all, it's very, very poverty mentality. Very poverty mentality. So before we go here, let's think about this for a second. Let's imagine someone comes to you. This is what I see when I think about an agent that just wants to do everything on their own. Think of it from a business perspective versus real estate. This is what needs to happen. The whole mind has to shift to being business owners. Think about this. I come up to you and I say, hey, hey, Ali. Ali, I just bought a restaurant. I just bought a restaurant, man. And you're like, no way. What is it? Oh, man, it's a it's an Italian restaurant. It's got a good brand. It's, oh man, it's so great. It's got customers already. It's a sure money maker. This is going to be great. And I'm just going to, and you're going to be, oh, that's amazing. Awesome. I'm like, do you know what's cool? I'm going to actually cook because I'm going to save a bit of money. Okay. I'm going to cook. I'm going to serve. I'm going to host. I'm going to do the web development, the online marketing, the sweeping of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the parking lot. I'm going to do the skip the dishes. Uh, I'm going to do all of these different tasks and it's going to be awesome. Ali, what would you say to me? And don't be nice. What would you say to me? Ali, do well, do, how do you say it last name? Doji, do we, do we? Sorry, dude. How can we book that call? Go to realestatebootcamp.com. And you can book a call with me, Facebook user. Don't know who that is. 
Uh, do you think an agent should be making a certain amount per year before hiring an assistant? I'm going to come back to that at the end. I'm going to do some questions and answers. So hang on at the end. I'm not going to go tons of time today, guys. There's just no point. I'm going to hit your thinking, give you some stuff, and hopefully you can execute on it. But yeah, 100%, I'll get back to that. It's a great question. So I'm not sure if, if uh, Ali's there, but the example of the restaurant, you think I'm an idiot. I'm going to buy a restaurant and do all the work. No, if you're going to buy a business, if you're going to do a business, you need a team. It's just mind blowing to think an agent thinks they can run marketing, buyers, sellers. They can do all the administration. They can do their own taxes. They can do their bookkeeping. They can do their booking their calls. They can do the freaking follow up. They, they put up their own signs. They, they drop off feature sheets to their, like, it's insane. I don't understand why this is not the main conversation at brokerages. Why are we not talking about how to scale a business so you can actually enjoy your wealth? The guys that make the money in the business aren't really enjoying their wealth. I promise you, I work with so many of them. I know guys that do two, three hundred deals a year that I've worked with that simply doesn't have a day off. What the F are you making $1.5 million for and you can't even take a day off? What are you doing? I know business is fun, but I guarantee you that's not why you hired me for business. Why are these guys coming to me now after they've hit the millions? Because they didn't build a business to serve a life. They built a business to get the gross numbers, to go bigger and bigger because you didn't tie your business to purpose. As you see how to hire an assistant, I'm getting your mind to think. I got to shift you internally. I got to shift you so you can actually make the move to hire an assistant. You are fucking crazy to think that you can do it all and how be they successful. Exactly. You're crazy. Good luck. Do you understand? This is so important. Step one. Ready, guys? Here's some how for you. Here's how. Step one. I go internal like I always do, okay? You need to identify the systems you want off your plate. So if you took time right now and you write down on a piece of paper every single thing that you do, first of all, I hope it overwhelms you. I hope you get so filled with anxiety. I hope you get filled with a realization, a smack in the face that goes, how the hell am I gonna do this? If you're planning to be successful, I don't, like, I believe 100%. If you don't hire an assistant, you are 100% planning to play passively. You're playing not to lose. You've never met a winner that plays not to lose. You know what? I can't afford hiring an assistant because you know what? Why? Because you're planning to absolutely not make sales. That's why. If you were planning to make 10 or 15 more sales this year and it's going to make you 50 to 80 grand, but you can hire someone for $15,000, why the hell wouldn't you hire them? You would do it in a second if you believed in yourself. It's an inner game thing. Why am I not hiring? Did you know when companies go crazy, they hire hundreds of people at a time? That's because they're growing. The big companies hire, 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 hire. And the speed of hire is actually a problem because they get hired fast enough because they know that's how you scale. But if you're playing the game, you're like, well, if I can, man, if I can get one extra sale, what the hell are you talking about? Why are you not betting on yourself? Why are you not winning? This is an inner game. When I had, like, guys, guys, I believe in myself and I'm okay to fail. I'm okay to look like an idiot. I'm okay to fucking swear sometimes. I'm okay to be me at all costs. I'm looking for my tribe. I'm looking for people that want to take this journey in my life together, building a life we love. Using a real estate business would be great to pay for. But why are we playing defense? Why are you not saying if I'm going to get 10 new deals a year, I've already got a preset budget to actually hire and freaking put in my systems. But instead we play defense going, well, what if I don't make any more money? Well, you're not going to. Not with that mindset. This is a massive problem. So let's start with identifying your systems. So here's the thing. What makes you go crazy? So when I work in my reboot, I actually do a full energy audit. I do your personal viewpoint on your body. I do your friends and family. And we also do all the aspects of your work. And what we do is this. Write down all the systems, every single thing. And say, does it strengthen me? Does it weaken me? Does it strengthen me? Does it weaken me? Does it strengthen me? Does it weaken me? You got to take a look at what is actually driving your energy. We have to look at what fires you up. Can I tell you something? There's no such thing as procrastination. There is no such 
thing. It's the shit you don't want to do. So why would you try to be a less procrastinator? Instead, get that freaking energy drain off yourself. If you hate doing dishes, I promise you, you'll always suck at doing dishes. If you hate cooking, you're going to eat out more. You, it, you're, I'm going to master doing dishes. No, get someone else to do it. That's a business owner. So you can double down on what you love. If paperwork drives you down, you should look at that as an emergency. Now, I'm going to show you guys something. I'm going to show you something because I got to sell you on the idea of an assistant. I need to understand the why and why you need it is this. Let's do one task. Let's hire someone right now. What we're going to do is this. I've done this across Canada. I've done this down in the States. Whenever I hit the stage, I love the question of this with real estate agents and even mortgage brokers and business people. It's the same question. How many transactions, how many deals did you lose because of lack of follow-up? I would love for people to jump in, post it. I'd love to see what's going on here. Uh, if you want, put, put it into the, the comments. How many deals did you lose last year because you simply didn't follow up? This is a very powerful question. I've asked it all across the country. So there's one guy, there was one guy in uh, Vancouver. I was at the event and he goes 10 deals at least. Okay. I said, okay, great. What's your average commissions? The average commission was 10,000, three to five, Allie, three to five. I don't know exactly, but I assume five to 10. So let's say 10. I bet Allie, there's more just so you know. And if it's a $10,000 commission in Vancouver, and you are going to get all 10 because you somehow have a follow-up system put in place, how much more money you're going to make? It's easy math. It's $100,000 more. So why would we not hire someone for one hour a day to simply take a look at your list, call you once a day and say, hey, once a day you say, hey, look, did you meet anyone new? Is there anyone that you need to be reminded of following up? And oh, by the way, remember yesterday you wanted to call this guy? Did you call them? So this could be one hour a day, which is $15 an hour to simply look at your list, update your list, and remind you who to call. Send you a text with their phone number. Say, call this guy. Remember you did a CMA. You haven't followed up with him. Or remember this guy wanted to see a house. $100,000 in Alley would have, Alley would be $200,000 or $250,000, depending. And if you're in a lower market, let's just say $50,000 of actual new revenue. We work so freaking hard to find new revenue, make more deals, but we don't look at our business and our systems. Our leaky boats are ridiculous. There's, you're losing more business than you're finding. What are we doing? Hire someone to remind you to call people. Let's, let's do the math, okay? Let's do the math. How much is that going to cost? Let's go all the people that give the bullshit excuse that you can't afford. Sorry, I'm being a little bit rough, but you know what? It gets me a little frustrated because I can see how successful you could be. So here's the thing. $15 an hour times five days a week. <clears throat> let's give her seven days a week. $15 an hour times seven times 52 weeks. Okay, we are looking at $5,460 for a return of anywhere averaging around $100,000 more revenue in your business. We do not need to learn. We need to move forward. It's a hack. So why, and you know what's insane to me? Across the whole country, I've been speaking and saying this on lives and even in my own coaching groups, in my coaching groups, we actually see the results. But outside of that, what's interesting is you see this, but no one actually does it. No one actually does that. Everyone's like, wow, that's amazing. I'm like, do you want me to make you $100,000? Yeah, pay me 10 grand. I'll coach you for five minutes. Now hire an assistant for five grand a year and make 100 grand more. All they're there to do is remind you and manage your list. I hope you're getting the point here, guys. We need to shift the thinking. I need an assistant. When do I hire an assistant? Like today, today. First of all, identify what you want off your plane. What you what, 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 where you're going to be slow is what drains your energy. You're going to like, I, I, how many people are like, man, my assistant does like 10 times more work than I do in one hour. Yeah, exactly. So we need to do an energy audit. 
And I've explained that. So I'll leave that with you. Uh, in my in my real estate reboot, we do a very deep audit. Actually, we do an uh, an audit on your client experience. We do an audit on your business systems, your mindset, and your and your uh, client acquisition. We we drive that all the way down, and and we we really need to find out how to make a business fit you. So you wake up in the morning and you'll do all the tasks. Most of the time, you've got to get rid of some of the tasks that are driving you, weakening you. So business owner versus versus worker. This is the number one greatest shift needed in the industry because the industry is built on old school sales tactics, prospecting, make a hundred calls, you get two deals, which is really important at the beginning. You need to hustle. You need to grind. You need to freaking ask a thousand people for business. You have to do this. And if you're a struggling new agent, because you're not asking for business enough, it's a very simple thing. It's not some freaking lead gen technique. I made 440 grand net uh, gross, gross. My net was somewhere around 300. But I made that with no lead gen, no website, and no business card. When I started as an agent, I knew right away I needed to build a system. And I knew the number one thing I needed to do, the number one thing was to get deals. I didn't give a shit about my social media. I didn't give a shit about nothing. I built it along as, because that's an 18 month strategy. If you're a brand new agent, the only thing you need to do is focus on sales. It's the biggest problem. It's another big problem because they're, hey, okay, get your lead gen together. Yeah, do your mail out. No, no. How are you going to scale three to 400 relationships in 90 days? So I did that in my first year, but I also hired an assistant within my first month because I knew what I was going to do. I knew I was a businessman. The problem is you get busy. You get really, really busy. And as a, as a worker, as a worker, you try to outwork your busyness and that you can, but you'll lose the relationships around you. You'll lose your self, self, self value. You'll, you'll be grinding and then you'll hit burnout and you'll be bitter. You'll be bitter at the industry. I'm sick of this industry. It's, it's brutal. No, 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 no. You created your own problem. You didn't build a business. You tried to manage every single system yourself. That was the issue. So let's keep moving forward. You need a mindset shift. You need a business owner. The cost of being disorganized, <clears throat> that's the lost deals. Think about this, guys. Imagine if you actually had a contact system in your, like a system to keep in touch with your clients. Did you know that 90% of the deals you do, 90% of the deals you ever will do in your entire life is stealing that business from another agent. This industry is so crazy because it's all focused on new deals. When my obsession is how do I keep this client for the next 20 years. If you can shift your mind to saying that client will give you four to five referrals in 20 years, what we need to do is we need to compound our base and never lose our base. This is where an assistant can help massively. And so what happens is let's just imagine you're kind of near your end of your, end of your career. You've done a thousand deals. What if you kept every client? What if you kept every client? Think about this. What if you kept every client and then 5% of them referred you every single year. You would have 50 deals a year without opening up any bit of marketing. You would not be trying anymore. You could potentially outsource that to a team member. Why are we not building a real estate business as our retirement plan? See, most people think, ah, I got to stop the grind. And when they quit their business, 10, 15, 20 years of business, they literally just shut the tap off and they lose the asset, which is that base. Financial planners sell their book of business. You know why? Because they keep their clients. I hope I'm messing with your head. I'm hoping that you can let go of some other bullshit time. You're investing in another lead gen, all this other bullshit out there and focus on one client at a time, blow their mind, keep them for the rest of your life. Yeah, it's slow, but you'll win at the end. You won't burn out anymore. You need an assistant to actually do that. So next step, now that you've got your audit done, what we need to do is we need to think about shifting your thinking again. So far, we've got people watching. I haven't seen too many people fall off. If you guys are still there, jump on. Let me know if you're there. So I'm not just talking to my head. Uh, I see that there are some people still kicking around. Uh, we've got we got a, quite a little audience here, which is nice. Uh, we're going to have a Q&A in the next few minutes. So get your questions ready. We're going to work through this. And now I'm going to spend the next, you know, afterwards, 20 minutes of just really focusing on answering your questions. But I'm having, I'm hammering on the why today because you already got the how. It's called Google. So step two. Project hire. I gave you an example of hiring one person for one hour a day. Now, if your mind goes, if your mind goes out there and says, "Oh, how how do I find people? Are there people that actually going to work for two hours a week?" Yeah, yeah. There's millions. Now get over it and stop asking so many stupid questions and put an ad out because you could find that out without. That's called resistance. 
what's happening is we have emotional insecurity. We have resistance. Hey, there we go. We got some people. We got emotional resistance and then we create excuses that are practical excuses. Follow me guys, a practical excuse. If you're giving a practical excuse, you have to ask yourself, is this emotional resistance? Am I scared of conflict? Am I scared that I'm going to be under the microscope? I, I, am I going to fumble around? Am I good enough? Am I going to watch? Am I, am I, am I going to, am I going to make money? I just totally, this is fun watching you this morning. It says Facebook user. So I really don't know who that is. We got to get this figured out. So I can see the names. So project hire. Let's talk about some of the things. How about this? Submitting paperwork. How about booking your showings? One of the first hires I ever made was a deal was that was a feedback manager. I separated myself amongst all the other agents that did the automatic feedback, which is not client experience. Plus, you don't understand that feedback is actually a sales tool and they're missing it hugely. So the feedback system is every single time someone would view one of my listings and sometimes you had 30, 40 listings. So you know for a fact you're beating all the other agents. They're not calling. You've done 10 showings and no one calls you. You get some stupid automatic email. And the thing is, even if we fill out the information, they don't have context. Being a salesperson first, you can talk to your sellers and be like, hey, look, I've got a feedback system and I've got a feedback manager. The feedback manager calls every single client. A lot of other agents like to automate it. But the problem is they don't know why they're doing feedback. They always sell the why. Always sell the why. Here's a little bit of a side, side training here. So when you're talking in a listing presentation, what we've done is we separate ourselves from the other guys. We say every single real estate agent gets a phone call from our team. And when that person says, we, we look for information. Sales is very simple. Find the problem, solve the problem, make the sale. But if you're not doing feedback, we can't solve the problem. We are one of the best teams in the entire nation for navigating your sale. Most people are great at exposure. We're great at navigating the sale. So what we do is we separate ourselves a little bit on my team and we really focus on that. And that's why we are, we're a business owners. We're not workers. A lot of guys are hustlers and you just can't keep up. Do you think if a guy has 20 listings, you're going to actually get feedback? Think about it. We've got a system in place that actually gives you within 24 hours of ever showing a full written report. Even if we don't actually get a hold of the agent, we're going to send you an email that says left message. Because we really believe that if we can find the problem, solve the problem, we get pen to paper. See, that's me selling a system that I'm not running. Now, what's pretty powerful is the assistant sends me the feedback form and the client the feedback form at the same time. So we can actually jump on it. The, 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 we've actually sold properties with this feedback form. We had someone not open a door thinking that the condo only had two bedrooms. They, and we, because my assistant goes, hypothetically, if this was the one, what would have to change? By the way, that's a good question. You can't be like, did you like it? Nope. You don't do yes and no questions. So what happens is they answer the question and say, yeah, if it had a third bedroom, we probably would have wrote an offer. Really? Let me just, oh, guess what? It has three bedrooms. Are you kidding me? We must not open the door. How stupid. True story. White Avenue in, in a beautiful, beautiful uh, high-end condo. They went back and they put an offer and bought it because of the feedback system. So that's a story I actually tell in a CMA presentation, but it's all built on a system. One system run by someone it takes maybe an hour a day. My system costs me maybe $7.50 to $12 to $20 every day to run the, 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 the feedback. But now you can image it. Yeah, we've got a feedback manager. Oh, really? Yeah, it's one of the most important tools because we build in the white space. We want to compete against each other, but you're going to go compete on knowledge, stats, understanding price. I'm going, to, I'm going to be competing on our feedback system, actually getting your house sold. And so this is where we win. So you get so much advantage of actually building out a system, understanding how to sell it, but you need an assistant to do those things. So find something that is draining you and actually hire it out. Now, like literally understand that the first hire you ever do is so you can get the failure out of the way. Do I need to say that again? The first hire probably will fail. I have one guy, his name is Koken. He's been in my business from within. It's a, it's a group that's an invite only. I do not market it and it's sold out for the next two years. So it's a small group. I take on retreats. I really work with these people. It's my inner, inner, inner group. And, and this guy's been with me for a couple of years and he's actually coaching alongside me in some of my programs now. He took four assistants. He failed four times with, but he failed faster than most guys. Hired an assistant. They had some really great reason why they couldn't work for him and left. But that happened four times or three times. It happened three times. He was the common denominator. So guess what? Because he moved forward, we learned his, his issues with it comes to leadership. We never would have been able to find that issue from a coaching place without him 
failing. The failing is so freaking important. You hire one, you know it's not going to work out. The next one's going to be better. And then the next one's going to be better. This is not a one hit wonder. This is called business. You just have lose an assist and you get a new one. You need to learn the skill. And that takes practice. It takes reps. You're not going to get an assistant. Like, oh, it fell apart. Yeah, I did. Good. Good. If you can't fail, are you kidding me? Think about this. Let's write. Let's read a book on how to ride a bike. Let's. I'm, I'm not quite ready yet. I'm just going to learn a little bit more on how to ride a bike. I'm doing some studies on it. And uh, so once I learn how to ride a bike uh, on, on paper, I'm going to really jump in. Yep. Yeah. And months later. Yep. So I'm learning how to do tricycles now. Yeah, I'm learning that there's bikes that have bigger wheels and I, the gears and they, they could rebuild the bike. They could build a bike, but they couldn't ride a bike because they've never jumped on. The guy that didn't read the book, didn't study, didn't learn is going to have more success by jumping on the bike, falling down, jumping on the bike, falling down. That is what you need. If you don't think failure, failure is actually the greatest medicine to success you'll ever see. So oh, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Yeah, of course you're not. Get on the freaking bike. You will learn new data that's related to you. The learning that you learned is always related to someone else. You are the common denominator that that is the, the learning can't give you is what you're like hiring, what you're like as a leader. That's why coaches fail all the time because they're not coaches. They're trainers. Coaches are going to build around you. And your, your specific skill set, trainers are going to say, here's my program. Make sure you make it work. It's absolutely insane. That's why I work with eight to 10 agents uh, at a time because I have to build and help them on their terms. I got to understand their psyche. I got to find out what their story is. What's their backstory? Did you have an aggressive family member that caused you to, to never, ever, ever want to deal with conflict? Well, guess what? We got to deal with conflict so we can get you better at business. This is coaching. Coaching is, and then someone that comes into my room and that knows it all, I got to hit them right between the eyes because they're not listening. I got to stop them. See, this is where coaching is so important, not training. Make sure if you ever hire anyone, they're not just saying, I'll teach you my system because the system worked for them, but the common denominator is you. How does that system play out to you? If, what if it's an introvert, extrovert? What if it's a detailed person? What if it's a visionary? What if it's someone that does their best work under massive cramming pressure and you've got someone teaching you how to, how to plan your day? Like it's, you have to understand that that has to be custom to you. So that's why I'm giving a little bit more broad. I'm changing your thinking. You got to execute the way that you execute. When you fail and learn a new way that doesn't work, the more you fail, the more ways you learn and help you move forward 100%. Now add speed to that. Speed is the winner. Speed's the winner. So if we have our, if we're perfectionists, they're the slowest people. We beat perfectionists all the time. They've got the nice product, but we're making more money and a better life. What tasks should they do? Wrong answer. What systems do I need in my business right now? That's the right question. Once you build a system or need a system built, for example, a birthday system, we, we build out, we get full guides on exactly how to build out the it's literally a step-by-step -step guide. It's one of the best follow-up systems we've ever made in our whole life. It's the birthday system. Guess what? Hi, now that I have a birthday system, you literally could hand the birthday system to the assistant and say, can you execute on that? That's why you got to build out your systems more than you got to hire an assistant. But the assistant, once they're clear on what you need, they can help you execute. Step three, take action. Even though you're unclear, please take action. Don't be like, oh, that was great. Ben's neat or I hate Ben or whatever you can say. But if you go home and then you're like, I need an assistant, but you do nothing with it. Don't disrespect me and don't disrespect you. What a waste of time. You don't, if you catch yourself jumping on another webinar, another learning, you have an emotional block. This is not a business block. And I just desperately ask you to look at how you're holding yourself back. That's the bigger question. And we can figure that out in five minutes. Because if you don't actually execute, you got an emotional block. That's why 90% of what I do is psychology. 10% is business. But they go hand in hand. So my life motto is move forward even if it's slow. Adjust along the way. By the way, that's the fastest way to do it. So what we're going to do now is this. Here's the house, okay? Here's the house. We're going to go into the Q&A. So you guys ready? We're going to do a few minutes Q&A and we're going to move on. How? Where to advertise? How? How to write an ad? How much... Do you pay? What hours should they work? 
licensed assistant or unlicensed assistant, one assistant or two assistants, profit share or not, what tasks should I do? What systems should I get them to run? So in my real estate reboot, I have literally every one of these answers. I have the entire guide of how to get it done. And I'm not going to sit there and do that. People pay me great money to, to have that. Uh, but what I am here to do is not to give you the entire playbook because I don't think that'll serve you. I'm here with the actual higher value than just all my systems is I'm here right now to serve. So <clears throat> I will spend time. If there's no one asking questions, I'm jumping ship. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing right now. Uh, and actually, I'll throw this up here, Q&A, so then you can see that. But anyone, there was one question. There's one question. I'm going to ask this question. I don't know if they're still here, to be honest. I want to get my, oh, there it is. So the question was, I'm moving it up, moving it up. Uh, do you think an agent should make a certain amount of per year before hiring an assistant? I hope the presentation in my chat here has given the answer to that. Because what it is, is the answer is, do you think an agent should be making a certain amount of money per year? Nope. I think you need an assistant on day one. If you are buying a Starbucks, if you're buying lunch, stop buying lunch. Stop going to Starbucks and take that $15 and put it toward 60 minutes of time. Don't look at it as hiring. Don't look at it as an assistant. Don't look at it as a full-time or part-time. Hire a task. Project hire for $15, $15 an hour buys you 60 minutes. Do you know how exciting that is to buy human beings time? Once you get it, you'll get addicted to it. You'll be addicted to it because that's how business people do it. You think the guy, do you think the guy that starts, uh, starts Walmart is greeting people at the door? <laughs> nope. That's business. It's how much money do I have? How much can I buy time? And during that time, what can I be doing with that time to actually grow the business, to do what you actually love to do? So I hope that answers your question there. Uh, if there's if there's anyone else out there that has a question, you got to ask now because I'm not going to sit around and wait. I'm going to just jump out. I'm not going to sit there, but um, I will actually do a couple things. I will actually answer a couple questions. First question, licensed or unlicensed? I'm an unlicensed person. I believe that focus on the administration is, is key. Someone that is hiring a licensed assistant is maybe looking for a new team member because imagine that you have all your paperwork and systems that you're running. And then the licensed assistant is out there showing houses. To me, it doesn't make sense. And that costs a hell of a lot more. What it is, is a licensed assistant can go do a deal here and there. I've had licensed assistant. They were just a heck of a lot, heck of a lot more money and uh, same results. So a licensed assistant is something that I would probably, it would have to be very uh, certain circumstances. Understand that part-time and project hire is 50 times better than full-time. Here's why. If you have two hours to, to work and you give that person three to four hours worth of tasks, it gets done. If you have eight hours of time and you want to give them eight hours of work, they do six hours because there's something about having that energy of like, we need to get more done than we need. So I really believe that people with less hours get more done. Make sense? Makes sense. How much should you pay them? 15 to 20 bucks an hour is a fantastic wage for an assistant. I like the idea of giving bonuses or I like the idea of gifts. Now, I'm not a fan at all in profit sharing. I believe that uh, a lot of people that are profit sharing don't see their own value and they feel like they need to pay them more. And it doesn't, it is absolutely unneeded. So the only time I profit shares, I had, I had a business partner uh, who's actually one of my top guys on my team. I gave him uh, up to 8% of all of the sales on the team because I wanted to scale the training. I wanted him to take them on showings. I wanted them to train the new agents. That's when I profit shared. An assistant is like, it doesn't make sense to profit share. That's like having a web developer as a profit sharing, having having your sign guy as a profit sharing. The idea, it's, a min, it's administration. So if you want to give a profit share, I would do it in a bonus structure. I wouldn't do it a deal by deal. That's just my opinion. So it's better to hire two part-time one, 100%. Imagine having two or three assistants at the same price as full-time. What happens when one goes down? The other one steps in. The greatest stress for teams and business owners is you lose an assistant and they're the only one you got. You're losing your freaking mind. 
So having two and they're both cross trained, it's exactly how I survived three or four assistants ending up moving on and leaving because the second one, even though they weren't as good as the first one, could keep my, my ship running. I think a Star Trek Enterprise back in the day and they, and they lose their captain and they've got a skeleton crew. That's what I'm talking about is that you at least always have that going. You got to not ever have that risk where one person goes down, you're screwed. That is a risk you do not have to take for a part timer who works one hour a week. You could cross train them on the basic operations. So you let them sit with the main assistant. You spend a you know, week's worth of their wage understanding how the machine runs and then they can step in and help whenever they want to help. So just remember that's where two is two part timers or two or three people doing projects in your business plus image wise. Now think about the picture. Look at my team. Look at this. I've got this person working for me. You're going to meet Jen. You're going to meet John, but they don't know they're not all full time. So you've got this image as well. You've, you're actually bigger than you are and you're building an image, but you're actually doing it. It's got so, so that's important too. When someone sees you, they're like, oh, wow, he's got a team. He's got professionalism. Wow. He must be a business guy, must be successful. So there is part of that story that you're giving as well. Is anyone else sound cutting in and out all the time? The screes froze on me for a long time. Did that happen, Jordan? I think we're good. I was fine the whole time. Okay. Well, I hope that was just someone. So there was a bit of quietness for a while. So uh, what are your thoughts on sharing an assistant with three or four team members? Okay. Okay. Thanks, Ali. So, so working good for me. Right on, Gary. Thanks, buddy. So here's the thing, guys. Uh, sharing an assistant. So I'm, I'm not a big fan. Okay. I'm going to get to the advertising question. Perfect. I'm not a big fan. But it works in some cases. I've coached many agents. I like the person that's into my world. Okay. So I like the person that understands I train them and they work on my systems and they work within my world. Now, does it work? I like the idea as if you shared an assistant, I think it's a great way to move forward. I think it's a great way to start, but now you got two leaders, three leaders and depends because if you're going to hire an assistant, I think the better question is, is what systems are they going to run? So let's talk about that. Are there thoughts about sharing an assistant with three or four team members? Sure. But as a leader and as a business owner, you're going to tell that team member, which is your assistant. So your assistant, I need a feedback manager. I need someone to make sure I follow up. I need to make sure my CRM is up to date. Rather than saying I need an assistant, I want you to change your thinking. Is like, can I share it between three or four people? Well, what systems do you need run? See, this is where we're getting into actually getting into executing. Okay. Hopefully that answers your question. Should you know, should you know your systems? Should you know your systems? It's pretty vague. Should you know your systems? Well, of course, but what is a system? What's a system? System is a pen and paper. See, we have this weird abstract. Oh, I need systems. Like what is the picture that you have for systems? Systems as I got a birthday system, a feedback system, a deal flow system. I've got a, I got a lead gen system. I've got sales team. I've got admin team. I got hundreds of systems, but I built them one at a time. So the thing is, should you know your systems? My advice would be start with one system that brings you results and run it. Start with a second one, bring it results. Now, if you need help, June, I am doing the real estate reboot. There is a few spots open and that's us going through your whole personal exam uh, audit and also your business audit and implementing all your systems. That's in 12. That's a 12 week process. So that's real estate reboot. So if you want to book a call, that's great. So, but here's the thing. Uh, is anyone else cutting? Okay. Is there thoughts? Should you know your systems? Um, that's all. Oh, we got some more comments dropping. Oh, here we go. Fine here. Continuing continuation of question. What should you know your systems inside or out before you have someone take them off? Take them on. Nope. Because that's the perfectionism. That's something else going on emotionally. I think what you want to do is, is you can find a system that's executable and move forward on one system. As soon as you do that, you will have new data in your mind. You'll understand exactly how to execute better. You'll get more clarity. But if you have to know your systems inside and out, sure. Here's a pen. Here's a paper. I know my systems inside and out. So the, even the question seems to be overwhelming, like inside and out systems. Yeah, I have a birthday system. We send cookies to the doorstep of every person. Like, how do I know that system better than that? So what we want to do is how do we know the systems inside and out saying track my, make sure my contacts on my CRM are up to speed. Make sure my calendar has my, 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 my birthdays in it, make sure like, so really what it is, is know my systems inside and out is not even a real thing. 
That's just a simple overwhelming thought that's going to make you feel overwhelmed and potentially suck because it's impossible to do it. Should I know my systems inside? It's impossible. So I'm, I'm obsessively training, obsessively doing it. I'm above average on what on executing and, and doing well in business. And I don't know all my systems. I, I build one or two at a time. So I might know if a system's way better, but systems is very abstract. It's like the word love. The word love. Yeah, let's love. What does that mean to everybody? There's 50 or sex. Let's talk sex. It's a different definition for everyone. Systems is like that. Should I know my systems inside and out? Well, that's impossible because there's some context missing. I don't know what that means. I would say this, find two or three systems that could change your business and just get those running. Forward motion is the goal. Uh, it was cutting out a bit. Okay, we'll give us a system once we sign up for the reboot. You get them all, Ali. I got, like, if you look, here it is. This. Every, every single system that I've ever done, market research, magnet system, every single thing. But that's cool and all, but the actual training is I'm gonna help you actually get over why you haven't done it yet. We gotta figure out the emotional resistance. We can deal with that. And then you start just freaking flying. So yeah, that's all. That's where I give it all away. That's where, that's all. That's where the effort goes in. Anyone to have any other questions here? Any other questions here? Just going to look back here. Awesome guys. Here's the deal. Every single Thursday, I'm going to be doing this. I don't know if I'll do it this long. I don't know how long I'll do it. So here's the deal. This is really, really, really important. I'm looking to build this community. I'm looking to change the industry. I'm looking to make it more evolved. There's some beautiful human beings in this business that just need a little bit of help. This is a place that people can come to. I ask you guys to be evangelists. If you like what you've done, if we're going to go every week. I'm going to do a new topic, but we're going to always do a tactical mixed with psychology. Always. You'll never be like, here's what you do. Here's what you do. No, I'm going to go, why aren't you doing it? So this is going to be a place where we can actually get challenged. So it's going to be the place where I can do for free. There's so many people that reach out to me. Uh, I don't do a hell of a lot of coaching because I keep it small. I want to make impact. I'm not here to have thousands and thousands of people in my coaching programs. I just want one person at a time, blow their mind. And my brand, like your brand, should be, is the conversation behind my back. So when I do stuff like this, I think, what are they going to say? What are they going to say? What is going to be the conversation? So I ask you this. If you like what I'm saying, I ask you to give a shout out, you know, share this. I'm actually going to be, I'm actually going to be, uh, uh, I don't know if we're going to delete this or what. I think we are going to delete this and then repost it. But either way, share the group because this group is not going to be about sales. It's not going to be about, it's not going to be about anything other than let's deliver the value. Let's really help people and change the way we think in this business. I've got a few couple more comments here before I jump off. Uh, done. I'm in. I need this all. Ali, can't wait to chat. Where are you advertising for an assistant? So indeed in Canada is one of the best places to advertise indeed.com. It's free. Now, uh, how to write the ads and all of that. That's a whole nother workshop. I've got fully written advertising, how to write them, what to include in there. But at the end of the day, get very, very, very clear on the systems that you want them to run. Uh, Ben's reboot program. Oh, this is a little weird reading it all out. Ben's reboot program is a hundred percent best thing I ever did to help me in my business. Tenfold highly recommend. Awesome. Awesome. I went to real estate and it didn't work. Okay. Let's try this again. Facebook user. I went to real estate. It's real estate reboot camp. Is there someone who wrote this wrong? Oh man. The, the, the email's been wrong the whole time. <laughs> Can we get that changed right now? So here's the thing. Real estate reboot camp. Jordan, can you get that fixed up real quick, please? Real estate reboot camp.com. That's funny. We've had the wrong uh, website the whole time. Who cares? Freaking cares. Doesn't even matter. So, yeah. Did I write it? Reboot. Oh, that's me. No, see? That's the thing. I'm no, slightly it dyslexic. Should, it should work. That's the right one. Okay. So, it was, the, it was the Facebook user. Most of the time, it's me. I'm going to admit it. I got dyslexic. I can't see those things. So, and I don't even care. At the end of the day, we want to drop value here. So, okay. Awesome, guys. I will uh, talk to you later. Uh, have an amazing day. Take action, fumble your way forward, fail forward. Don't learn how to ride a bike. Get on the freaking bike and just ride and know you're going to fall. You're going to skin your knee, but that is the fastest way. If you want to learn it differently, go ahead. Take 10 years to try to move forward. That's not my style. Anyways, have an amazing day, guys. Cheers.